Hey, hey, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I hope your day is going well. My name is Kieran Trust, and I am your host for today's video. In today's video, we're going to talk about entitlement management, and I'm going to introduce you to the concept of access packages and how we can set those up. So in Microsoft Azure, what we have is uh, access packages, which is within uh, identity governance. And the way access packages work is they enable you to do a setup for resources. Uh, so that this way you can automatically administer these resources to individuals within your organization or individuals outside of your organization. The great thing about access packages, it alleviates that burden for your administrators. So that this way they can say, hey, I'm giving you a package which will give you access to a, a number of different things, whether it's teams, whether it's applications, groups, or SharePoint sites. And when I give you those applications, you can request it. And then there's a whole process of, um, around that request, whether it's, hey, you know, we're going to go through an approval process or if I'm going to only give you access for a set amount of time. So there's a bunch of different things that we can do with access packages. What I want to do is just really jump into how we go about setting that up. And, I'll, and as I walk through the setup process, I'm going to explain uh, each portion of what you can do with access packages. So to start off, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. So as I mentioned to you before uh, about access packages, it get you're able to give uh, your users uh, ability to re to have access to resources. So what we're going to do is, if you look on the right, we have a group, and it's going to be the marketing group, and that's our scope. So anybody within that marketing group, what we're going to do is give them an access package, and it depends on if we're going to give it uh, access to an application, or we're going to give them access to a group, or you can give access to a SharePoint site. So what we're going to focus on, we're going to give them access to an application. Um, and then I'm going to show you exactly how that works uh, through access packages within identity governance. So here we are back at the Azure portal. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to access packages. And within access packages right now, you're going to see that there are no packages at the moment. So I'm going to click a new access package. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name my access package. So I'm going to say marketing access. I'm going to give it a description because I need to give it a description. So I'm going to say for marketing team. And then what I'm going to do now is there's catalogs. So there's different catalogs that you can have. So you can say, okay, this catalog is going to be for marketing. This catalog is going to be for IT. This catalog is going to be for contractors, so on and so forth. So if I hit down here, I have one for contracts, I have one for general, but I don't have one for marketing. So I can come here and click create new. And then over here, I'm going to type in marketing. And I'm just going to for marketing team. And I can create one. I can enable it. Or I don't want to enable it. Right now, I'm going to say enabled. And then I can say enabled for external users and I can say yes or no. So I wanna, I'm gonna show you this one. So right now I'm gonna say no for external users and I'm gonna click uh, create. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna say resource roles. So if I go to resource roles, this is exactly what I was referring to before. I say, okay, it says add a different resource to uh, this access packages, um, different resources. It says specify the permissions associated with each resource. So I have the option of saying groups, teams, applications, or SharePoint sites. So if I say groups and I come over here, what you see on this side is you're going to see it says see all groups and teams. And I can click on that and I can see all the different groups within my organization. For us, we're not going to do that. We're going to say we're going to go to applications and I'm going to say see all applications. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my marketing team needs to have access to Azure VPN and they need to have access to this proprietary application called Marketing App. And I'm gonna click on Select. Once that's done, next thing you know, I'm gonna do, I have the resources of Marketing App and Azure VPN, and it's all application type. Then over here, I have the role. So I can say a uh, different amount of roles for this. It's only giving me default access, and over here is default access as well. Depending on what you're choosing, you'll, you'll have more different things here, options for roles. But for us, this default access is perfectly fine. So I'm going to come over here and click Next. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to, it says users who can request access. So this is saying, hey, um, who do you want to allow to be able to request access to this uh, access package? If you remember over here on the basics, 
when I click the marketing, I'm going to go create new catalog. I said enable for extended users. I put no. So if I come back over here to request, you see how no is already vagued out. I mean, excuse me, uh, users in not in your directory is vagued out. It's because I said this catalog isn't associated with anybody outside of directory and I only want it for in internal users. Then I have this option here where it says for users in your directory and then I have this option where it says none, administrative direct access only. Now, in the beginning I mentioned to you that access packages allow uh, administrators to uh, be able to take the load off, alleviate the work that we have to do uh, to uh, manage our environment. So we don't want to choose this one, but you can if you want to in your organization. There may be times where you're like, hey, we want to be able to uh, give direct access, and that direct access is a click of a button, and it gives them a whole bunch of different resources. Or you could say, I'm, I'm fine with users uh, um, requesting access in the organization, but what I want to do is I want to do it for specific users. And in the PowerPoint slide, I said that we're going to go, we're going to say we're going to do it for specific users, and we're going to only allow people within our marketing uh, group. So I'm going to look for marketing. And here we are. We have that marketing group, and I'm going to click on select. And now that's the scope. So it says select users and groups. I'm saying marketing. I can add another group if I wanted to, but that's fine. And then, and then I have here where it says approval, require approval. And what I'm going to do here for require approval, I'm going to say, I can say yes, and then I can say require justification, I can say yes, and then I could have different stages of approval. I can say manager as approval, I could choose specific approvers, I can do a whole bunch of different stuff here. I have the options is unlimited. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no, because I want to make sure that we're just getting, making this simple. Uh, I always believe that when you're learning a new concept, uh, just to be able to digest it from a simple standpoint. Uh, is making it easier for you. So I'm going to keep it to no, and then when it says enable a uh, new request, I'm going to say yes. So this is saying, okay, this is going to be a request that you can um, show in my, uh, my access packages. So over here, I'm going to click on next for request their information. Okay, so over here on request the information, what I need to do is I, I can put in some questions here. I don't have to, but I want to show you how that works. So for the questions, I'm going to put in some uh, information here. So let's go with the first one. Okay, uh, why do you need access? And I can have answer format. I can say short text, multiple choice, long text. I just put short text in here. And then I could add another question here. And I could say, is this access uh, needed? And I'm going to choose a different one here because I want to show you how it shows up. And I'm going to do multiple choice. So it says answer values are required for multiple choice. So it's saying basically, okay, what are the multiple choice that they can choose from? So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to say answer value. I'm going to say yes. And language. I'm going to say Spanish over here. And this is a localized text. So Microsoft gives you the option to localize that text so based on where they are geographically you can say all right we're going to change it from translate it for them basically so i'm going to say c and then over here i'm going to say no and i could do another thing i'm going to type in spanish uh, mexico is fine and i'm just going to type in uh didn't take huh spanish mexico and i'm going to say no and I'm going to click save. Display string is required. Uh, hold on. I think that's why it's giving me that error message. And no. Okay, so let's click yes. We're good there. And right here we have answer format, short text is letting us know this one's multiple choice, so on and so forth. I'm not going to add any other information in there. That's fine. So let's go to life cycle. So over here at lifecycle, we have the option to say access packages assignment expire. So you can say, when do you want the access packages to expire? You can give it on a specific date, say number of days, number of hours, so on and so forth. So we'll say on a specific date, we'll say February 9th, 2023. Uh, users can request specific timeline. You can say yes, or you can say no if you want to be more strict with your access package. 
Um, and then you have these advanced options, allow users to extend access. You can say yes or no, depending on exactly what you're doing is uh, and totally, it's entirely up to you. And then you could do a require access reviews. Now this is always great uh, to do access reviews because sometimes you set something up and you just forget. Um, that tends to happen when you're managing a huge environment. So access reviews, I like this option that Microsoft has in here with this uh, access package. Uh, but I'm just going to say no for this standpoint, but you can see you can change it to annually, biannually, um, monthly, quarterly, so on and so forth. And then you can have your reviewers here. You can have your managers. So your organization is set up in the right fashion that each user has their managers um, within their Active Directory system. Then you can choose this one. And then the show advanced review settings over here. Uh, let's see what shows up. It says if reviewers don't respond. So it gives you a whole lot of different things you can go through, but I'm not gonna go through that. So I'm just gonna say no review, which is fine. And then we're gonna go to rules. Now rules is configure, is basically conditional access, right? So if this happens, then do this, if that, and so forth and so forth. Uh, I'm gonna leave this alone. It's in preview mode, um, but if you can you can mess around if you want to, but you're gonna get really much, pretty much the gist of how these things get set up. So then we have the review and create. So we don't have any red marks on it, but it's gonna give us everything, right? So remember what we said, we said we're gonna do the marketing access, it's for the marketing team. We see the applications, it's the marketing app, it's our proprietary application. We have our Azure VPN. We also have uh, which users is gonna be for, for users in your directory and it's our marketing group. And then we have our questions. So we have why do you need access, which is gonna be a short text format. Uh, and then we have is this access immediate? And then we have our multiple choice. So next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to click on create. And then we have it there for our create. So how do you go about accessing this access package? So I enabled it for users in, in the marketing team. But let's say if you remember in the very beginning what I was talking about, you could have access packages for people outside your organization. Let's say I wanted to give them access. They wouldn't be able to say, go to the uh, website and log in that way. I would have to give them, like external users, this My Access Portal link. And I would have to email them that information, myaccess.microsoft.com, and give them this directory information, and this way they can access it, and then they would be able to sign in and be able to access it. So that's something important for you to realize, that people outside your organization, you will have to provide them the My Access Portal link. Now, people within your organization, they will be able to go to the My Access Portal, myaccess.microsoft.com, and then they'd be able to see it. So let's go ahead, let's sign in with a user, test user, so that this way we can see how that shows up for them. So here I am, I'm signed in um, under my test user who is associated with the uh, marketing uh, uh, um, group, and you see here, myaccess.microsoft.com, and if you look over here, you see that I have access packages, you see that we have available, active, expired. We have one available, and it's our marketing access um, access package. And if I come over here and I click request, there you have the questions that we have. So we have, why do you need access? And then, is this access immediate? And if you click here, we see our yes and no option. And then we also see business justification, and then we can request the access. So... I hope this information was informative for you. That is how you set up access packages. And I hope you enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making this video for you. I think access packages are uh, absolute extraordinary um, way of you know managing your environment and then on lessening the load to your administrators. So if you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it here at Cloud Scholars. Our goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.